The Aintree Grand National has an illustrious role of honour. One of the most memorable of recent years was Rule the World, trained by Mouse Morris. A mercurial training talent who often prefers his horses to do the talking. Well, that's Springwatch, one of the inmates here at Mouse Morris's yard. We're going to chat to Mouse Morris, of course, he's an Irish Grand National winning trainer twice. He's an Irish Grand National winning jockey as well. He had an amazing year last year when Rule the World claimed the big one at Aintree. What a day that was. We're going to chat to Mouse today and hear what it takes to be a trainer. How does he get those horses so spot on for the big days consistently? Hopefully he'll share one or two of his insights and how he does that job so well. The Arthur trainer has been lucky that you get sent the right horses and hopefully you get a good horse, you know. I just get, I get lucky every now and then. I get lucky. I don't know, it's hard to explain, it's just... I suppose more feel than anything else, you know. When you, like, everyone says, oh, they can't talk to you, but like... Oh, they can. No, he would talk to you. I wouldn't go into any sort of horse whispering kind of thing now, but <coughs> listen, he just he just has an eye for it, you know. He's, he's a jockey, he's worked with horses all his life. So, I mean, it's just something he's, he's picked up along the way um, and learnt over the years. It's all go, as you would expect, in the build-up to a huge race like the Grand National. And right now, Thunder and Roses, who's an Irish Grand National winner a couple of years ago, he's getting his new shoes put on. So these are the shoes he will actually wear in the race. Hopefully they'll be the set of shoes that bring him to victory at Aintree. When he sees the young horse, he kind of he sees it three years down the line. He always has a race in mind and he kind of trains him for that. I mean, he's had seven winners in Cheltenham, Champion Chase, Gold Cup, uh, two Irish nationals and English nationals, you know. So it's, uh, yeah, he's been proven over time to, to get them bang on for the day. Winning the Grand National was amazing. Um, it just a dream, an unreal dream. I'd die happy I won, I won it, so I hardly expect to, to have a lightning strike twice. You know? What do you think you, you can see from here? Like before they, before they show it on the track, do you think, oh, he's good? Is there anything you look for? Yeah, if they come up in front. Yeah. <laughs> Far enough in front of the other ones. Right, the horse is just about to begin loading here. You can see a few of Mace's charges. They're about to get into the horse lorry, and today they're heading to Thurlis. There's going to be a schooling race there. It's a bit like a practice match, a preparatory step ahead of the bigger race days, but a chance to get them away, work them hard, and it's just that race day experience that it can really help with. Well, this is a truly unique experience this afternoon here at Thurlis Racecourse because there's no crowds. It's a schooling day, but it's all business. That's the lorry we saw Mouse load up his uh, charges onto a little earlier on today. When you consider the challenges of a national hunt trainer in these days, and of course the competition he's up against, if you just look nose to nose at the big green lorry, that's Willie Mullins. Look at the size of that thing. And he didn't just bring one of those today packed with horses, he brought three. So it just puts into context and Mouse Morris continuing to dole out those brilliant results, win those big races in the face of such incredibly strong competition. Last year at Aintree, Mouse Morris ruled the world. He returns this year with Rogue Angel, hoping to make history.